Hello there and welcome back. In this video we're going to see how to insert data into our Firebase database. And in, in our last video, if you remember, we saw how to connect a Firebase database into our Android application. And in today's video we're going to see how to insert data into the database that we have already created. Now um, let's head back to Android Studio and as you can see, I have already created a layout, uh, a pretty basic one with fields like name, age, etc. Uh, you can also see ID that I've given to each one. And I also do have a submit button down there. Uh, this was indeed created using XML in case if you're still wondering. And, and this is the Java file. It's called data insert. Right off the bat, we are specifying uh, names for our fields here very quick. And edit text for fields and button for our button. I'm just providing uh, some names here so that I can use this to uh, refer to our actual layout that I've created earlier. Now you can use a find view by ID function to point each variable to our fields. And just like this. By the way, uh, feel free to post this video uh, if you want to check out the code. I'm doing it very fast. I hope you can follow along. And now let's create another reference variable here to connect to our database. And you can see, you can use the Firebase database dot get instance dot get reference and pass the name of our table. And this is used to uh, refer our database in the Firebase cloud. So uh, the name that you give here will be taken as the uh, name of our tree or you can also call that as a table. Now let me create another Java class and this time I'm calling it member since our table name is member and and here we are going to define our variables and their types so that we can receive values to these variables and send them into our database. Okay, that's very easy. What I'm doing here is that I'm just defining the types of the variables that we are going to use so that I can uh, receive values to these variables and I can send them into the database. Now right click and click on uh, generate a setter and getter. Now why we use setter and getter? This might be one of the questions that you are having right now. Now why we use this, like I said before, we use those functions to send data into our database. And uh, actually we, are, uh, we have to obtain the value that we are entering into the fields. So uh, that's what we're exactly doing with setter and getter. We are, are actually receiving those data that we enter into the layout and we are receiving them using the setter and getter function and then we are putting them into the variable that we have already uh, mentioned above and then we pass them into our real database. That's how this thing is going to work. Now here I'm really creating a uh, uh, set on click event listener so uh, when you click the button and uh, it will send all these data uh, to the uh, variables that I've already mentioned in my other Java file so uh, like I said before feel free to pause because I'm doing it very quick for the sake of the length of the video just like that Now let me create a member object and using that member object I'm going to uh, send each type of data to the variables. Okay, this is very easy. And I'm using a 
push set value and defining our table name that is the member so what happens is that when you click the button and if everything is successful then it will also show this toast that I'm creating right now like we did in our last video now let me run the emulator see if my code works okay uh, my system kind of slow I guess okay now this is a wrap now let me provide some values blah 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 now if you check our database in the cloud that you can see that all those values that I've uh, given are started to appear in our database in the cloud and this is how it works let me provide another one real quick okay you can also see the toast method that I have created now okay if you expand that you can see the values just like that now let me delete these values and I'll show you another thing in a moment let me delete them real quick this time I'm adding an extra line of code uh, let's place a child here and see what happens just like that and I'm going to name that member one let's emulate our code okay uh okay now load it up oops um let me get back to the emulator yeah okay now i'm going to put some value in here Alright, uh, now yeah, you can see that the value started to show up in our cloud. But this time you can see that uh, beneath the member tag there is another tag called member1. And that's because we added that child in our code right there. Okay, that's for this video. Hope you find it useful. And feel free to ask questions. And also, um, if you like the video, uh, hit that like button. And also, do subscribe to my channel and i really appreciate that and thank you very much again and i'll join you later